Hi guys and welcome to another episode, I thought it was very high pitched wasn't it, another episode of uh, Let's Play Final Fantasy VI, uh, lots to do today, in the last part we got, what was it, two party members, Terra returned to us, uh, and we got the, the back half of her story because we missed it the first time because of that crazy hidden basement, uh, and also we picked up an exclusive new character just here in the world of Ruin, uh, the Yeti, Umaro, who has, as far as I can tell, almost no story or dialogue, but some interesting mechanics. Today. Um, um, in this episode, I plan to do the same, okay? I'm going to try to get a party member back. I don't know who. When we got Terror in the previous part, I was actually aiming for Shadow. So I'll aim for Shadow again today. And we'll see, you know, where that adventure takes us. But we'll get an old party member back. And then I'm also going to get us a totally new one. Just like the Yeti. There's someone else out here in the world of Ruin that I have read about. And we were so close to getting in a previous episode. And I just never realised. And it's funny looking back at the live chat, actually, from you guys. Um, you know, who were clearly in the know. And uh, I just missed it. So anyway, we'll get to that later. Um, first, a little bit about our active party here. I've actually been playing the game a little bit between the last two episodes. Basically just grinding. Okay, so you didn't really miss anything. I've been doing the same strategy of getting in random encounters outside the old man's house, fighting stuff, I get poisoned, people get KO'd, they get darkness on them blind, you know, uh, any kind of status that I don't want to spend the MP or whatever on, I just go into the house, sleep in the old man's bed and leave again. I must have done that. <laughs> Oh god, I don't know. I must have slept in his bed at least 30 times. And it's okay because he's senile and he doesn't seem to think there's anything weird about that. So um, basically grinding on the mobs here just for uh, AP. I don't really want levels, but thankfully these things aren't too strong. I don't really know how the encounter table works in the world of Ruin. Maybe it's the same general stuff all over the world. Um, but these things aren't too strong, so I didn't get too much XP, so we didn't level too much. What I really wanted was AP. So I've got this party of Terra, Umaro, Mog, and Edgar. And I've gone with this team because it's like all the new guys, really, sort of. Terra only just came back, so this is a privilege to finally be able to play her in the World of Ruin. Uh, Umaro's new, Mog is essentially new, and even when we had him in the World of Balance, we didn't really have him for that long. And then Edgar, I feel like I haven't used for a while, and I wanted to play around with his tools and stuff. Obviously, this means we have two candidates here who could play as Dragoons, but I've kept it as Mog. I'll go through the gear in a second. So my main motivation with leveling is just to level these guys up a bit. i kind of got two things I wanted to do. One is Terra, okay? She's got Trance, right? Which turbocharges her damage. She's a spellcaster. We just got the Gur spells, Blizzarga, Firaga, and so on from Valagarmanda. So, oh wow, I, that Gur sound in Valagarmanda. I'm sure that's not actually uh, intentional because back when this originally came out, they were just calling it Fire 1, Fire 2, Fire 3, well, and maybe that Fire 4 as well. Right? Anyway, uh, we have the new Esper. We have the Guz. Terra's never had the Guz, so I, basically I'm just grinding to get her the Guz. So for the rest of this episode, she will have them, which is great. Um, like, I've taught them to Celeste already, but she doesn't have Trance, so I've made that swap. At the same time as our Edgar here, he was super low level. And like he was still in his 20s or something. So I brought him along. I put that growth egg on him, which I'd previously had on Setzer, I think, or maybe Gao. So he would just catch up in level to our, our general average. So at the end of the last episode, everyone was around mid or low 30s. And now we're in the very early 40s. So we've on the average gained this little party here. My other characters are probably still a little bit low. Uh, we've gained like five or six levels or something. But it was quite a lot of fights just to get the goods because I was only doing it at a one times rate. And I'm sure there was a much better place to grind for AP. In fact, you guys explicitly told me in the comments uh, other areas in the world of Ruin you can get really good rates. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not worrying about that too much. We'll we'll get all the spells for everyone later. I don't know. We'll see how, where this all ends up taking us. So, um, over to Edgar. Some stuff I wanted to talk about. You guys clarified for me in the comments. Um, and I want to be putting this knowledge into action. He obviously has Chainsaw and Drill. They're both tools that do massive single target damage. And the question is, which one do you want to use? Well, just to clarify here. Chainsaw generally does do more damage as the later ability, but Chainsaw one quarter of the time instead goes for death. It goes for an instant KO effect. So, and Drill meanwhile does a little bit less damage, but ignores defense, so it's like generally always good, and it doesn't go for the instant KO. So even though Chainsaw does more damage, technically Drill is the safer choice against bosses, because Chainsaw one quarter of the time will try to death, it won't work, because bosses are immune to the death. That's why if you've seen, whenever I've been trying to chainsaw these bosses, it said miss, miss, miss. You don't really want that. So I think I'm just going to go to spamming drill on bosses, and chainsaw on random mobs that can be deathed. 
uh, and hopefully that's something good to do. Edgar's build here, by the way. Let's let's look at this. It is kind of cool while I was grinding. I don't know how long I'll leave this on him. I gave him the Genji glove. If you remember, we got the Genji glove um, a little bit back. It was in the cave to the sealed entrance to the Esper world. Uh, it was also with that crazy bit of gear where really early on in the story when we were playing as Terra, uh, we got asked by Bannon, hey, do you want to join the Returners? And I just said yes straight away. But if you say no, 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 if you keep denying him, like why would any player ever do that? But if you do it, there's like a hidden Easter egg where you get given the Genji glove super early. Um, well, I missed that really early Genji glove, which uh, it seems probably would have been more fun to play with. We got a gauntlet instead. Um, and the gauntlet's good in its own way. Gauntlets, you can't farm from any mobs. So technically, if you're going for like a 100% playthrough type thing, where you have the maximum number of items, the gauntlet is the right choice. Because uh, you can farm loads of Genji gloves here, apparently somewhere in the world of Ruin. But having a Genji glove earlier in the Let's Play would have been really cool. Anyway, so we got this Genji glove. And if you remember what it does, is it means you can... In one attack command, you will swing both your weapons, your main hand and your off hand together. And we were talking about using this with lock, so like, uh, you know, we could have had stealing daggers on lock or, and then execute mug and he would have struck twice and he would have been stealing constantly. We didn't really get to use it though and then Mog, um, lock went away. So here I've put Edgar on the Genji glove and I've given him these dual wielding elemental swords, the flame brand and the ice tongue. I, I get so much nostalgia reading the names of these weapons by the way, guys, because, you know, Flame Brand, the Ice Tongue, they're in so many uh, of the other Final Fantasies. Anyway, so what this will do is when he attacks, he does like a fiery attack, and then he does an ice attack, and then he comes back. And every time he hits, he has a really low chance to proc an extra spell, like he'll cast Fire or he'll cast Blizzard for free instantly. And therefore, there's a really low chance that he'll attack, get the Fire proc, attack, get the Blizzard proc all at once, which sounds cool. But uh, it's not really that good. Don't get too excited. Uh, his magic stat is super low. So when he does get the free proc, he does almost no damage with it. And the chance is just so low. But whatever. It's cool, right? Um, and the other nice thing here is we do have Amaro in the party. So if Amaro ever throws Edgar... Remember I said it will take Edgar's stats. He has the two weapons equipped. It, that does do bonkers damage because it adds both the flame brand and the ice tongue together. So quite nice. Also, where I'm grinding, some enemies are weak to ice, it seems. And I don't know this for sure, but just through how I've been looking at the numbers between the episodes. And some enemies are weak to fire. So by giving him one of each sword, it kind of helped me out. I didn't really have to, you know, at some point I'd get the benefit from one sword or the other. So Umaro's build, there's not really much to talk about here. It's no different to before. I mean, we can barely equip or do anything with him anyway. I guess the whole point is, you know, he th he throws the other people so their builds matter more. You know, he can't even equip espers, by the way, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, which means he doesn't get, like, those stat level ups and stuff. He's, he's such a weird character. Uh, Terra over here, sh her build's kind of simple. She's got two earrings. I basically stole these off of Celeste. But I've also given her, for the hat, I've given her tiara and a white dress. I don't remember if in the previous episodes we were using these. It sounds very princessly, doesn't it? Um, but basically, they both boost magic. So she's got the double earrings boosting the magic and the perk for them both being together boosting the magic and then both armor pieces. Then I gave her another elemental sword, not because I actually expect to be attacking with it, but just because they also boost magic. There might have been something else better for her main hand. I'll look into that later. But she's hitting pretty hard. If she uses, like, Fira on an enemy that's weak to fire, she'll hit, like, 8k at this point. And I just unlocked Faraga when starting to record this episode, so I I'm very curious how much damage that's going to end up doing. So, uh, then Espers. Oh boy, Espers. I want to use a lot more Espers, right? And every time I try to use them, there's some annoying complication or, you know, hazard. So here at the start of the episode, check this out. I, I went online and I, I basically did a bit of a quick Google. Hey, cool, cool things to do with Espers and FF6. What are the cool Esper abilities? But, you know, all the discussion I got from Google was just about how you cheese the stat level up stuff or what characters want what, what Espers because, oh, this guy's a physical guy, so he should have this Esper. This guy's a magic guy, so he should have this one. That's what all the discussion is. What I'm mostly interested in are these cool animations and the special new moves just to vary up what we're doing in the fights a little bit here so with all that said here's what i've i've just equipped and this is just based on my own preference right now umaro can't even have espers uh, as i say so he's sorted terra i've given midgasorma 
because we only just got Midgasorma. I'd love to give Midgasorma two Amaro since it was picked up from that skull right next to where we found the Yeti. But uh, we only just got Midgasorma, and remember, it's got this ability, Abyssal Moor. I actually ended an episode two episodes ago saying, oh, let's let's check it out, and we haven't yet. So I'm going to use that. It says it crushes all enemies with seismic waves, which is interesting. Edgar uh, is has got Valagarmanda, also a new Esper. I, I don't really care about teaching him the guz. But it will just be cool, and I like that tri disaster attack, so we'll use that again. And finally, with Mog, this was kind of a flex spot. I've given Mog Kirin, because I really like that thing where we open a fight, and we cast Kirin, and we get regen at the beginning. I think that's just super cool. It's like one of my favorite things to do so far. Uh, you know, it's like Golem uh, giving you auto uh, the big protect effect, and someone else gave us Shell. Uh, same sort of idea. Oh, uh, and then finally, formations. So I haven't talked about this for a while. But so, obviously, the idea is with the base game that if you're on the back row, you take half damage. But in theory, you also do half damage. So the people on the back are protected. And the, the twist to this is the magic you cast from the back doesn't get the damage penalty. So the idea here is that you have your squishy mages on the back line casting away. They're squishy in the first place, but because they're on the back line, they've got that little bit of innate defense. They do their damage. And then you have your physical guys on the front. That's the idea. But in this game, in Original 6, as far as I understand, nearly everything you do in terms of like techniques and spells and stuff, none of it gets cut by the damage. So you may as well just have everyone in the back row nearly all the time. It's kind of rare to have someone on the front row, only when you're doing a lot of physical attacks. So with that in mind, I was kind of curious about Mog here. Mog is using Jump, but Jump is kind of a physical attack, right? It's replaced the physical attack command. Uh, but apparently, yeah, Jump is unaffected, so I've put Mog onto the back row as well. It's weird, though, because when I googled this, there have been some suggestions that here in the Pixel Remaster, certain elements of the balance have changed. And it's like a mix of the original game and the Game Boy Advance balance and new balance. So I don't really know what the deal is. Like certain attacks that would never miss originally do miss now. And, you know, we saw that patch note, which shows that clearly in the modern era, they're willing to change certain things. And to be honest, guys, it sounds like the original SNES version of this game with the formation thing was just shit. And if they were balancing it, I would expect them to have stuff like jump be affected by formation. So I don't know for sure, but this is what I've got. I, I have Edgar on the front because he's doing physical attacks with the twin swords. And everyone else is just on the back. Okay, so for our first adventure here, and this is really just a side thing. But check this out. Talking about equipment and stuff. Uh, look at this. I have these items here. These reed cloaks. So it turns out these cats I was grinding on here... Uh, they drop these, I think rarely or whatever. I mean, I only have 11 and I've killed a lot of these cats. So why are these interesting? Well, if you read the description down there, these things are the imp equipment that I mentioned in the last episode, where there's like this crazy gear in the game, but it only really benefits you if you're under the status effect of imp. So this this thing here, the reed cloak, was legit apparently just called imp armor in the original version of the game. And I was amazed. I was like, oh my god, I already have some of the imp, imp armor. So unlisted in game here is while you're wearing this, you just start to absorb the water element. And you get this flat massive uh, magic resist bonus. But then also when you're under the imp effect, you get 100 regular defense as well. So it is really strong armor. And apparently while you're wearing it, you will slowly learn the spell imp too. You know, like how when you equip an Esper, it slowly teaches you spells. Apparently this slowly teaches you the spell Imp. So, um, this is just one piece. There's a shield, uh, which I guess has a, a list of similar effects. There's a hat and a weapon. Apparently the, the weapon is a sword called the, uh, wait, is it a sword? It's called the Imp Partisan. How funny is that? Uh, this is awesome. I have, I've played a lot of Final Fantasies. I never knew about this whole Imp gear set thing. They never like redid this as far as the anthology is concerned, as far as I know. Anyway, so um, that weapon, the Impartisan, it drops really near where I've been grinding here. It drops from these ultra dangerous T-Rexes nearby. Do you remember in the previous part, I wiped them? So I'm going to go and try and kill some T-Rexes just here at the start and see <laughs> what happens. Uh, they are very dangerous. They cast Meteor and stuff, but it'll be an excuse for us to use some of our new abilities. So let's just head over to the forest and see what we got. Now, by the way, there's some really interesting community trivia about these T-Rexes. So obviously here in the world of Ruin, almost nearly all the NPCs have had something to say that's hinting at something else like no dialogue is really wasted here in the world of ruin they're all talking about important things well a couple of episodes back you might remember we were warned by an npc about massive dinosaurs in the north of the veldt do you guys remember that 
Well, bearing in mind what I just said about how everything the NPCs saying are hinting and cluing you into other things, apparently back in the day, in the mid-90s, people wondered if that dialogue was a deeper hint about something more than just the surface level advice about the dinosaurs. Maybe there's something you can do there, because that nearly always seems to be the case in the world of Ruin. So, a kind of a conspiracy theory caught on about the T-Rexes. Like, I remember this would happen a lot with PlayStation 1 games as I was growing up. The idea was this, right? Remember General Leo, the temporary character that I mentioned in the previous part because he had a Master Scroll, you did a whole bit of story, you bury him at his grave. Well, there's kind of a big thing here in the world of Ruin, which is that there's so many characters that you think are gone forever, but then you go into this crazy basement or do a ridiculous sequence of events with Shadow, and it turns out that actually they are recruitable. So it was a big thing for years. People looked at General Leo and they thought, well, maybe you can save him too. Maybe you can get him in your party too. And that comment about dinosaurs in the Velt was originally mistranslated for North American players. Uh, in North America, it was just a message about how there was a big dragon in the forest. Like, they totally mistranslated it and suggested there was some kind of a boss there. So, people basically thought, go to the forest, kill a ton of T-Rexes, eventually a dragon would spawn. Remember I mentioned there's this thing, the Kaiser Dragon, which ended up in the Game Boy Advance version? People thought it might spawn there. And then you can kill the dragon and, I don't know, it will give you a revival potion or whatever. And you go to Leo's grave and you can bring him back. It was kind of this big cult thing. Uh, and I mean, it seems kind of fair since almost everyone else comes back. Look at all the stuff we had to do for Shadow. So, uh, yeah, kind of a fun thought, but sadly, none of it's true. It was just a bit of a mistranslation. And they're just dangerous T-Rexes the game's trying to warn you about. But I want to kill them here for the, the, imp, the imp gear. Uh, apparently, by the way, on that Leo thing, there is a glitch you can use as sort of a semi per to get him as a semi permanent party member, where you can take him to areas of the world he shouldn't be. And then there's another glitch where you can actually somehow return to the world of balance from here, the world of ruin. I have no idea how that works, but supposedly you combine the two of them, and you can kind of get Leo back in the world of ruin. But I mean, that's just breaking the game. Crazy stuff. I have no idea how it works or have actually seen an action, but. That's a pretty interesting note I read about. Wow, okay, these T-Rexes, holy crap, are they bu brutal. Uh, these single T-Rexes seem fine. Uh, so we almost just wiped in that fight a second ago, but it's only because Umaro is an idiot and kept attack- You know, we had a T-Rex on like 100 HP left, and Umaro kept going for the wrong one. We kept going for the one on the left. That's so annoying. Uh, anyway, yeah, look, even with just Blizzara, Terra is doing like 6k damage. I'm pretty sure that Blizzarga is going to go 9999. But yeah, they do these sometimes um, dinosaur pincer attacks like this one. These, you know, there's that alarm earring gear that's supposed to stop pincer attacks. Even that will not work against this. You have to get surrounded. And uh, yeah, you're actually just minor spoilers for about two seconds. I'm going to get game over on this one. They're really hard. So I don't know about these surrounded fights. I did not get an Impartisan and I got a game over. So I think I'll return it later. What I have noticed just doing these couple of little fights here is that I'm getting ridiculous XP. And having looked at Wiki just now, it says that this is like an amazing XP grinding spot because, uh, because of how much they give you. So <laughs> I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to get the Imp we uh, weapon a little bit down the road. Maybe level up a bit more, or I don't know. It's just when we're surrounded like this, it's brutal. Maybe if I had Celeste and Terra, and they both Blizzard good, we could probably just snipe a dino on one side. But the damage is just so high. Meteor hits so hard, that bite attack. If they hit you in the back with it, I'm taking like 7k sometimes. So there you go, Umaro is the last to fall. And uh, yeah, we wipe. Okay, so well, there you go. That's uh, sort of the start. One other little thing I want to do here as well, a quick adventure since we're speaking about imp, is to go kill those Tonbreeze in the cave. But none of my current characters have imp equipped. We have to learn it from Kate Sith. So let's hold off on that. Okay, man, I like how uh, every recording session I do here, <laughs> it's like the old man's house is like our base. Surely it should be the Falcon, the airship that I'm signing all these sections from. But I mean, I suppose we go to it each time. So, um, well, where are we heading? Well, if I want to see what's going on with Shadow, the location that we left Shadow was at Thamasa, okay, so way down in the bottom right hand corner. We did the thing at the cave in the Vale, and then we took him to rest there. So, uh, and I specifically am set looking on the mini-map there so that I don't forget exactly where it is. I suppose the quickest way would actually be to go this way. The temptation would be to go south, but no, north is a little bit better. You know, it's kind of funny, it's like when I went to Seattle, 
there's a weird thing where when you take a flight over to the west coast, when you go all the way up there, uh, here from the UK, you actually end up going over the North Pole, which is really, really, really weird if you, like, and completely unintuitive, but when you actually look at a globe, you know, it's very obvious that that's the, the most direct route. Anyway, well, not maybe not exactly over the North Pole, but pretty goddamn north. Um, okay, so... We can head on into Thamasa now. I just gotta remember exactly what Ian or wherever he was. What was our chests doing here as well? This is so bad, guys. I'm getting tempted now to get all the items, but there's just no way, right? So apparently there's no chests, but there are three items here. Is it possible I could find them and maybe just cut? I mean, that's totally possible, right? I'm gonna check all the barrels and stuff as we move around. I guess the smartest way to do this would be to do like a systematic sweep of the entire town. So we'll do this house first. Okay, so this was just the guys at the, uh, you know, the weapon shops and so on. Did they have anything good to sell us? Mystery Veil. There are some new things here. Circlet, a metal band that boosts the wearer's attributes. When I suppose, so who can wear this? Terra, Mog, Gao, Celeste. This is crazy. Look at all the character silhouettes that are here, you know. If we're going to get even more, it's amazing how quickly the party's grown, actually. If we're going to get even more of these, how's the UI going to actually fit them all? Maybe they'll all, they'll all grow. A lot of people can wear this. I don't know. Let's just buy, since we've got so much money, we've got 400,000 gil again. A jet black hood from a distant land. The black cow. I wonder if that boosts black magic or something. I don't know, though. Look, I mean, Gao, Mog, and Sabin. That's so weird. Luminous robe. A robe that shines with mysterious inner light. Nobody can even wear the luminous robe. Hold on. What? That's crazy. I'm so looking forward. I really want to get Shadow. What if Shadow wears the robe? Well, there you go. So I'll get two just in case. You know, we need that. Okay, thank you. Oh, I probably should have looked, actually. The Da Vinci brush. Oh, this is clearly going to be a realm thing, right? Um... So actually, so, ah, uh, did I say this already in a recent video? You guys pointed out to me, so in Final Fantasy XIV, I don't know if you guys watched my playthrough of that, but in fourteen, uh, here we got a Fuma Shuriken, a five-pointed ninja throwing star used with a throw command. Okay, well, clearly, uh, it only costs 500 each. I don't know, we'll grab some of these just to see how they go. There you go, that's probably enough money. Yeah, um, in FF14, they have a raid, a, a storyline, uh, that's kind of honoring this game six. It's all about, you know, it's, it's all referential all the bosses all the themes and the fights and things They're all kind of drawing on six So for example Kefka is like the final boss of that little storyline that side quest storyline in 14 And it's really cool and uh, you know, I played through that if you watch my playthrough of it It's on my second channel wouldn't potato stew uh, It's at the end of the Stormblood stuff. I'm pretty sure uh, you know, I had a lot of fun with that, but I hadn't actually played six I didn't know what everything was referencing now You guys have told me in the comments that apparently one of the bosses there now that I think about it is still what we haven't seen Like one of them was like, um, you know, just a mech from the Empire one of them's Kefka one of them's the ghost train We've seen all of those sequences, but there's another one to do with paintings and You guys mentioned that in the comments. That's very true. We haven't seen the painting boss. Have we? So I'm wondering whether that has something to do with getting Realm back here in the world of Ruin, because obviously Realm's whole thing is painting. She has like the sketch command and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm thinking probably that's a sequence in one of the towns or places we haven't been to yet. Maybe even in this video. Well, no items in there. So that's two, and not really any interesting stuff here. Now, wasn't Shadow like in this house, or is there a whole other house over in the- Well, no, certainly not this one. It's very small. What do we got here? We don't have any protect rings. A ring enchanted with a protective ward. Cast auto protect. Now, auto protect I can really get behind. I bet that is incredibly strong in some fights. I'll buy three, just so that we can equip, you know, everyone who might need it. The princess ring, a beautiful ring designed to protect a royal daughter. Only Celeste and Terra can equip it. Cast Shell and Protect when you're HP critical. Final Fantasy X had a bunch of gear like this, but I don't know whether I'm all about it, to be honest. Uh, three Protect Rings is good, though. The Peace Ring prevents Berserk and Confusion. Angel is also Regen. I like that as well, since I got the cash. Uh, prevent Poison and Darkness, meh. Prevent Petrification, meh. I mean, I love the idea that they... See, I really hate that we're not playing the Game Boy Advance version because, you know, it makes me think of back when we were playing 10 and at the end you've got the Dark Aeons and it's like, oh, what kind of protections do you want for which fight? Obviously, that game just boiled down to having ribbons everywhere really goddamn quick, but, you know. Okay, was Shadow in this house? There aren't any good places left to play. I don't think we put him in the burning building, did we? That's very unlikely. Here's General Leo's body. See? 
Well, no, his body is grave, I should say. Yeah, it's just, it's just his body's laying out on the ground. Oh, uh, we killed the T-Rexes. We couldn't find the Kaiser Dragon. We couldn't get the potion. Uh, but who knows? That would have been a cool update for the GBA game as well, you know, uh, if they'd added that. Yeah, I sort of wish we were playing that so that we had some super bosses and I could look at, say, that petrification protect and maybe it would be worth something. I don't know. Man, we are not finding any of these three items here. Any of them. I'm feeling like this is the house, by the way. I'm feeling like this is where we left Shadow. Where is he? Ah. Well, he's missing, if this is where he was. So, I actually... Uh, minor spoilers. I do actually know about this. But basically... Oh, wait, hold on. What about down here? Oh, my God. That looks like a staircase down, doesn't it? In a way. So, basically, uh, the deal is that you do the storyline we did with Shadow before. He's resting in the bed. And then I, I do know this, that when you return... He's gone. He's just vanished. I think someone in town is supposed to tell us about it as well. Ebbets Rock is above water for the first time in 50 years. Head north of town and you should be able to see it. Ebbets Rock. What on earth is Ebbets Rock? I don't know what that clue is. That'll have to go in the notepad as well. Oh, here you go. Look, if you're looking for that man who was dressed all in black, he already left. He said he was going to the Coliseum. Okay. So, uh, here's how we get Shadow back. I'm going to check this house. Oh, what if, what if the item is, like, in the cabbage patch or something, you know? What if you have to, like, interact with one of the vegetables from a very specific angle? Oh, my lord. I'm gonna check this one house, and then I will talk about getting Shadow back. Oh, hello, sir. It's hard to believe it's only been a year since the cataclysm. It feels like a lifetime ago. Oh, does it? I'll tell you what, we've had a year break in this series, and it doesn't actually feel like a lifetime ago to me. It feels like I was just doing it last month. How the hell did an entire year go by? I mean... A lot of shit happened with me last year, to be fair. But still, it's it's crazy how quickly the time passes. Oh, we got a cutscene, apparently. After the cataclysm, I awoke to find myself all alone in Doma Castle. When I tried to sleep there, monsters came for me in my dreams. Oh, it still frightens me just to think of it weird. They didn't want me talking to him from the side. It walked a path me around the front. Yeah, so uh, we did have that hint as well. And I do want to sleep there eventually. I think we entered Doma very briefly, didn't we? Okay, and the inn... There's no items here. You know, maybe they were World of Balance items? Something like that? I don't know. Is it really that entertaining watching me scrape against every little wall in these YouTube videos? I mean, hopefully. Okay, so here's the deal. And it's quite a clever little story that's going on here. Right, we want to go to the Colosseum. So let's see. The Colosseum was the very top left one now. I like this, by the way. Earlier, I was such a genius. You know, not going the entire length of the world when all I had to do was go off the edge of the map and I'd be there. The Colosseum is technically right next to us right now. I just have to move a little bit. But this time I'm a dumbass and I am going to sail across the whole world. Whoopsie. Ah, uh, can't win them all. Here's the game. We heard about someone who, were, who was looking for an Ichigeki at the Colosseum, remember? But we didn't have a Colosseum. Uh, we didn't have an Ichigeki. Then we went to the cave on the Veil. We found Interceptor there, and he was leading us through the cave. We found Shadow. He was wounded. We fought the Bemoth, and then the, the zombie Bemoth. Okay. But what did we find in the cave after all of that? We found the Ichigeki. Also, it's like a ninja item, I guess, which is what Shadow's like. Shadow's the guy looking for the Ichigeki. It, and we, we, he got wounded. We sniped it from the cave. And now he's gone to the Colosseum to look for it. But we've got it in opposition this whole time. So you can piece together all these different pieces of information to realize in advance that actually if you bet the Ichigeki at the Colosseum, you're going to bait Shadow out to fight you. That's the story. Here. And I think that's really cool. Okay, let's quick save. We got this thing about Ultros here as well. Oh my god, guys. So I actually did a bit of reading about this. So let's, let's speak to him. Me, the great and noble Ultros, reduced to working as a receptionist in this stinking Coliseum. <laughs> oh yeah. You better not cheap, uh, bet any cheap crap or Mr. Typhoon will have to come and teach our lesson. So uh, yeah, last time I was here, right? I love this. <laughs> He's just working reception now. Um, I asked out loud in the video. I said, this is so cool. Ultros is amazing. Is this his first time in a Final Fantasy game? I've got to know, you know, because... And I, and I didn't have the information on hand, and we were doing a live video, so I can look up. I have since looked it up, okay? So here's the deal with Ultros. This is his first appearance in a Final Fantasy game. As far as, like, the real-world timeline is concerned and the progression of events, this is the first time he appeared in a story. I don't know whether he's, like, you know, this archetype in literature of this chaotic force that just kind of is sort of an antagonist, but it's just messing around in comedy as well. I don't know about all that stuff, and I, I certainly don't know whether that's a staple of, like, Japanese literature or, you know, performing arts. But anyway... 
anyway, this was his first time. Well, what's quite interesting, though, is that when they started remaking these games, so they did, for the PlayStation 1, a remake of Final Fantasy 1 and 2 in, like, a double pack. I don't know, maybe you guys had this when you were younger. It was called, like, the Dawn of Souls edition or something. I'm pretty sure I got that right. In the Dawn of Souls edition of Final Fantasy 1, so their remake, which came out many years after FF6, they added Ultros back as like a new boss in, in a bonus dungeon, a bit like how the, the GBA version of this game had bonus stuff. So Ultros is technically nowadays in FF1. And you might say that, okay, that's his first show up, but but not really. I mean, he was here first. Then, by the way, for what it's worth, they did a remake of FF4, and he showed up in, in that as well, one of the remasters of FF4. So he's in 1, 4, 6, and then he's in 12 as well. In fact, if you've watched my Let's Play of 12, I don't know whether we've done it yet. Um, but there's a bounty where you fight Ultros, and the only way... You know how his whole shtick in this game is he loves girls? He hates men, and he loves girls. In FF12, one of the bounties you fight is called Ultros. He doesn't look as cool as this. He's just like a flan, basically, like a purple flan. But anyway, to get him to spawn, you have to have an all-female party. It has to be Pinello, Fran, and Ash. That's it. And I think that's kind of amazing. And I never knew. I never knew all this Ultros connection until now. He also kind of appears in 14, the MMO, if you do one of the side quests. That's not in my series of that. I think the other thing that's kind of interesting, actually, is now he's kind of this big anthology thing. People know Ultros as like a Final Fantasy thing, right? And Typhoon, I suppose, as well typhon as well but uh weirdly enough because he was new here in six when they made seven when they made eight when they made nine when they made ten he was kind of just a character from these games you know it wasn't an anthology thing he wasn't like a tom brian on ochi or something so he missed all of the next games that came out seven eight nine ten and in a way, that's like he missed the golden era of Final Fantasy, as far as I'm concerned. As I said before, I consider this the peak of the classic era. It's still pixel-based. I consider the golden era to be 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we move on. And Ultros isn't in any of the cla of the golden era, which is a kind of a, a weird, kooky little thing, you know? And as someone who was mostly familiar with that era, that meant that I missed out on him. Anyway, so, yeah, that's probably way too much talking. What was your hint? The more valuable thing, the, the the more valuable item that you wager, the better the prize will be if you win. Indeed, it will. Thank you. What about you, sir? I'm an Imperial soldier, probably the last one alive. I pass along a secret to that friend of yours with the bandana. Talk to the Emperor twice. It's a hint to finding the place where Emperor Gestal hid some legendary treasure. No idea what it means. See, here again, look. Emperor Gestal had a treasure. Locke is looking for it. Hmm. All the battles in the Colosseum are one-on-one -on -one auto battles. Yeah, so we don't get to control what happens here. Umaro, I think, is good for this. There are this. Guys, everything I read about in this game on the wiki, they have, like, huge lengths of information dedicated to how to beat them in the Colosseum because the gameplay is so different here. It's kind of wild. But, okay, so here's what we do. Care to fight with pleasure, and we have to bet something. We are going to bet the Ichigiki... Please tell me I did pick it up. Oh, well, you did pick it up. I remember talking about the fact that we picked it up. Nobody's got it equipped, right? Oh, my God. There's so many items for us to scroll through here. Oh, Lord. Maybe I should have sorted my inventory so it's all weapons together. Actually, it looks like I did. So there's Shuriken there. Mithril Rod. Thief's Knife. I haven't scrolled past it, I don't think. I feel like it's going to be near here. Come on. There you go. It's your Gicky. A ninja sword that may randomly dispatch an enemy in one hit. It's funny. You f I feel like the flavor text could have hinted this about Shadow as well. But wow, you know, uh, guys, I also think, by the way, this dialogue, well, wherever the dialogue was that we got about betting the Ichigiki in the Colosseum, I think that kind of ruins it. We have all the information we need to know, right? Shadow was found near an Ichigiki. A guy mentioned he'd gone to the Colosseum. That other guy mentioned that someone was looking for it. You can put it all together. I should not have ex uh, exited all of that just to go on this rant here. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but they have a much more explicit hint. Okay, so here we go. So we have to win the fight, I think, as well. So I think we're going to fight Shadow here. There he is. Oh, my God. Okay, uh, let's do Umaro v Shadow. Let's go. Oh, and finally, all these hidden things. Oh, my God. It's like one of those Russian dolls. Secrets hidden within secrets. Oh, wow, the combat music. Okay, Umaro gets a big hit in. We're going to miss... <laughs> wow, okay. What? Just two hits? Okay, uh, and we get the Ichigiki back. Thank you. I'll equip it onto you, Shadow. What are you doing here? Wait, wait, who's speaking here? Hmm, I'm gonna say that it's Edgar. What are you doing here? 
The only thing that I know how to do. I'm going to give him a Batman voice-ish. <laughs> Guess I can't do it very well. The only thing that I know how to do. I'm fighting. Why don't you come with us? Perhaps I should. All right. It's time to put my skills to the ultimate test. Oh, wow. Is that it? Guys, all right. I'm going to be a bit critical with this game. I don't think the writing's been very good in the world of Ruin. It's all really short little snippets of dialogue with absolutely no flavor in it. Sometimes it's a little bit disjointed. Have you guys noticed that? I, honestly, over the past like five, six episodes of this series, a lot of stuff has felt a bit disjointed like that. And I, I think, I feel like it's since we got to the world of Ruin. But there you go. And maybe it can be forgiven because that is such a hidden, crazy series of events. Shadow has to be by far the most challenging, wild, difficult, um, character to get in a Final Fantasy game because that's like three major steps and there's not even a real hint that he can return right as far as we know he's just a temporary character like General Leo but there it is let's see where he is on the Falcon there he is he's over there nice hello Shadow can you imagine like going around your mate's house and he's you've been playing the hell out of this game and then you go and you see their safe file and they have Shadow on their team back in the mid 90s he doesn't even say anything he just says dot 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 well, do you want the Ichigeki? Okay, where did he come in? He came in at level 37. He's got such a cool icon, hasn't he? 2,220 health. All right, so who's getting the boot? Do we keep Umaro? I think we do. I think let's, for now, keep going with this thing where it's like all of our newest people. So then it would be Terror. Okay. Another really interesting comp it feels like there. Oh my god, look at all these characters. So hold on, we can get the whole bottom row, can we? Oh man, I don't know. All right, there we go, so proceed. I'm sure there's a lot of other amazing stuff we can do at the Coliseum. Like I said, whenever I go on the wiki, if I look up a monster, there's a huge amount of information about how to fight the monster at the Coliseum. And then if I ever look up an item on the wiki, there's a huge amount of information on that as well, in terms of like what you can bet for it or what you get when you bet it. There's just so much, it's unreal. Okay, so... Oh, what do I want to do next? Well, I want to come back up to this island with this mysterious doorway. Because there's a character we can get there, believe it or not. I want to do that before the end of this episode. However, I also kind of want to see what this location is. And we have this whole continent here. Let's see, can we actually get into that place up there? Oh, it's so handy that on the mini-map it tells you. What you, where you have or haven't been. Like, look at this. Is this just a chocobo forest? So little indication of anything's going on here on the map. Oh, this is Duncan's cabin. Oh my god, it's been a long time since we've been here. Hello, Duncan. Move it! You're in my way! <coughs> Darn this old body of mine. No, oh, I won't do what I tell it to anymore. Oh, he jumped. Oh, is he just training? Will he jump over me? Move it, you're in my way. <coughs> oh god, I actually made myself cough trying to wheeze there. <laughs> uh, done this old body of mine, yeah. Hmm. So this was it with Duncan, right? I'm sure we'd have to do something here. Oh, well, hold on, no, but we've never been here. Is this it? Hmm. Do we need to bring a specific character here? Should we go and get Sabin back? Hold on, let's see what we can do with that. Let's let's head out to the Falcon. And then, oh, not this one. And the control scheme is so weird, you know. Whether you press Alt, Tab, Q, or E to move back or forth from a menu, it's just kind of insane. Oh, we're going to have to redo the pie here. All right, let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sabin, do you want to see Duncan for any reason? Instead of filling everyone in, let's just do this. Like so. And then let's land. Take the wheel. It'd be kind of nice if from the deck there, there was a button straight away to land. See that extra black screen that we get? We could kind of skip that. You know? All right, let's go through. It's nice that Duncan's still alive. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, 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 it did work. Oh, maybe I should have brought Edgar. We might have got bonus dialogue. Master Duncan. Oh my god, and his eyes. We see the white of his eyes. He's coughing. I just saw him coughing. Oh, maybe he was laughing. <laughs> Why the surprise face? Did you think I died or something? Master Duncan, I'm so glad you're safe. Oh dear, Sabin, you aren't crying, are you? <laughs> I'm so glad you're 
safe. <laughs> See, if I knew this game in and out, I would have voiced that better the first time. <laughs> Did you think a little thing like the end of the world was going to do me in? The earth tried to swallow me up once. He's very healthy now suddenly, isn't he? The earth tried to swallow me up once or twice, but I just pried its jaws open and climbed back out. What a mad lad. Sabin, it is time for me to teach you my ultimate technique. I have no idea where this is going right now, by the way, or what's happening. Uh, use it to knock Kefka into next week. Get ready. Oh, what? Oh, but he's the only one on my team. Oh, okay. It's not a real battle. It's just like cinematic anime dueling. I like it. Oh, he got hit really hard in the head there. Oh, man. That sound effect was enough to actually... When my PC... Do you remember there was a while when my PC kept, kept overheating? It would make that noise. That brrrr noise. It was the worst thing in the world. And I'm getting flashbacks from this cutscene. Yeah, I think I remember actually you guys did say... I pointed out that like Cyan gets his last technique at level 70 or something insane. And I think in response to that, someone in the comments said, Hey, WP... There's like side quests to get their final techniques. And I guess this is it here. I call it the Phantom Rush. Wow. Now go on, hit Kefka with every blitz I taught you. Oh, we should get an achievement for doing that. Okay, so cool. So this is one final technique. Do you, do you want to party up with me? You can join. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Go defeat Kefka. Oh, the dialogue is different. Oh, I hope I didn't miss anything. By the way, I keep doing this. I'm sorry. I just wanted to check. Yeah, we have the one item here. Oh, man. Okay. Well, cool. So, should we check that out? I'm a little nervous to get into a fight all on our own. But what's what's the big deal? What's the harm? I think we'll be fine, right? Come on, Sabin. As long as he's still got gear. I don't think I unequipped him. You know what I should really do? Go to a shop and just buy a crap ton of earrings because that's the main thing. Okay, here we go. So, the final blitz. Phantom Rush. Deal massive damage ah, to a single enemy. I wanted it to be AoE. Chakra here we gotta use more of because here it says restore some HP. But I believe you guys said this is this cures statuses as well and is actually ultra value. Also, I love this. I play Monk in 14, so all this stuff like Phantom Rush, Rising Phoenix, all of these are abilities that I recognize, you know. <laughs> Chakra is a mechanic, so good. So here we go, Phantom Rush. Oh my lord. The big value here, though, is that once I do this, I can just auto-battle, and it will enter the whole command in for me every time. I don't think I was particularly clear on my commentary on that before. Also, by the way, entering that looks really fluid and fun if you had an analog stick, because you just spin the stick. Holy crap. All right, 7K. I would have liked to have seen a 999 there, but you know what? He, he hasn't been getting grinded up in levels or anything, so that's fine. So here, for example, I just press Q. And I should have known I could do this. The whole, I mean, how many episodes of this series will we do this? And there I am entering in the command every time like a chump. But no, no, no. You can just hit Q when it's his turn. Uh, who else is that useful for? I'm not entirely sure. Look, let's say that I knew about that and I deliberately didn't use the cheese. So there you go. Cool. Um, let's get back to the Falcon before we get into another uh, fight here. So that's Duncan's Cabin and Phantom Rush. I didn't really think that we'd be going for that. Um... Right, let's check out, I suppose, one of these locations. And I'll get my party back and edit, and I'll see you guys in there. Oh, I was just recording. Uh, it was only like 10 minutes or so. Oh, that's such a shame. I forgot. I just did a bunch of stuff, but forgot to hit the record button. I, that's a rookie mistake. I haven't made that mistake for a long time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, guys. So I've got Shadow in the team now. Same general setup as we had before. More. I've just swapped to Marrow for Shadow because, hey, why not? Um, and look, I figured just before we go into the town here, and I haven't gone into the town just yet. You'll see it's still grey. Uh, let's do some random encounters just outside, because what I wanted to check here... Oh, that's a shame. I actually really like that commentary. I can't even remember everything I was talking about now. Um, I thought what might be kind of fun is... So here we can throw Remember with Shadow. I've got to figure out what the hell I'm doing with him, but you've got the Fuma Shuriken here. So we can throw those. We can jump with Morg, I suppose. But what I want to do is start using our Espers, right? So Kirin, we can get that in. And I just cast for the first time Abyssal Moor, and, but I wasn't recording. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. So here, check it out. Look. Midgasoma, Abyssal Moor, and this is pretty cool. I should have guessed this, but look, look at that amazing 
hole that appears on the floor. I should have guessed Abyssal more. It would be about a giant hole dropping down here. But yeah, it's about 2k damage. And then, of course, we have Valagamando with tri, tri Disaster or Tree Orc Attack or whatever it was they called it. Yeah, look at this. The regen from Kirin countering the poison. Love that. So, like, these two guys, I think, will be enough to kill these. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but it is weird that Terra now is at that point where she's doing 999 <laughs> to different things. Um, you know, she's stronger than the Espers. You know, and in law, she she's sort of part Esper, isn't she? My god, three of us poisoned there. She's actually running low on MP now, though. And, well, kind of. All right, so yeah, well, what I wanted to do was just have a couple of fights so we could see the Esper attacks and do a little bit of something. But also, I've been kind of curious, is the World of Ruin actually using a different encounter table in different continents, or is it all the same? And I have to say, most of the World of Ruin appears to just be, you know, these enemies. There's some slightly different ones here, though. So, here, check this out. Blizzarga. Let's Blizzarga this guy back here. Oh, man. I think the first time I ever cast that as well. Here you go. Look at this. Look at this animation. Holy crap. It's huge. It like covers the whole screen. 9999. And down they go. Incredible. Mog can kill that. Let's do a regular attack with Shadow. Uh, Shadow also, I've just equipped some generic stuff. He has like auto haste on him. I don't know. We'll figure out exactly what we're doing very soon. There we go. So, and we're getting levels so fast here. So check it out. Uh, I gave him a growth egg. Hermes sandals. And, uh, oh yeah, and so, and let's get another fight here. I'm really, there is a special mob that I just saw two seconds ago. And it dropped something really cool, so. Uh, Terra's a bit low. Do you want to heal yourself? How did you get that low? She only has 91 MP left. Oh my god, is it because she's poisoned? No, Edgar's poisoned. Well, let's go with an antidote this time to save our MP. I think I'd rather do that. So we got this forest. So I'm thinking that forest with the T-Rexes is a very special area. I don't know whether every little patch of forest has unique mobs. But here, check it out. Yeah, leapfrogs. Look at these. Um, in like a weird long row here. So I'm just going to tap Q. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have multicast Blizzarga. Uh, yeah, the, the formation thing's really interesting. You know, I was reading on the wiki. They had this wild page on there. Yeah, look, the fire attack did very little. The um, ice one did a lot more. They have a wild page on the wiki about like what they call dummy content, which is like um, stuff in the code that doesn't actually manifest in game anyway. And uh, there's loads of different formations of all sorts of enemies out there um, that you just cannot find and seem to be bugged for one reason or another. And I think that actually has a major impact when it comes to the Velt. So I think Terra is out of MP now. So the autoplay just had her physically attacked. So we could probably give her an ether or something. Status effects changed. Weird. But yeah, so there's some leapfrogs. I did find another mob. Um, let's see here. Should we use a tent? Yeah, let's use a tent while we're playing this shadow. Do we get like a, a black tent? We do. That's great. <laughs> no LP will be complete unless we show off all the tents, guys. I want to show off all the de desperation attacks as well of all the enemy of all the characters. You know, because we have our special techniques, but then you also have like the special desperation attack when you're low health. Oh wow, we're surrounded by them this time. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can AOE them very well. So let's see. Shadow throw a shuriken. Mog jump. Terror. Do Blizzarga, and then I'm going to hit X. Okay, so I can only do it, like, left or right, but we'll do a multicast Blizzarga there. This, unfortunately, still isn't going to be as good as I would have hoped. And then we will flash the guys on the right. Oh, my God, look at that. Two of them, and we still got, like, 6, 7K, even with the damage cut. Nice. Oh, if they both die there, that'd be so good. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. Well done, Mog. Oh, he didn't kill him. Okay. And now we got to wait for his jump to end. I like how the frogs are essentially dragoons themselves. That's kind of a nice little touch. Yeah, come on, come down. I don't have to queue anything, do I? In fact, I can't queue anything. We could just press X while we wait. There we go. Okay. And then jump, attack, anything you like, guys. Nice big crit. Yeah, I mean, look, he's basically doing double with the ice because that fire attack crit for 2k and the ice one just was a regular hit for 2k. Let's leave the forest here. Maybe the uh, special enemy I found was just out and around here. I might cast Kirin at the start of the next one as well because that will start regenerating. Yeah, here they are. Basilisks. Check it out. Whenever I see basilisks, it makes me think about FF10. Puma Shuriken. And specifically the ones on the Jose High Road. Like, these ones look a bit crap. But the ones in 10 are awesome, and you know, the Joseph High Road right where they first introduce um, petrification to you. 
And you can, you actually get Petrify Strike as well if you buy like the, the weapon from a walker or whatever it is. Oh, good stuff. These ones look pretty goofy. But here, check it out. Oh my god, this animation. Holy crap. Well done, Terra. I think you've got it. <laughs> so, they didn't drop anything, okay? But a second ago, um, they did drop something. Look at this. Look at what's in my inventory here. Uh... I got a new shield. Check this out. We also have these bucklers here, which I think are pretty generic. A crude turtle shell shield used by imps. It's another piece of the imp set, guys. We have two now. We have the reed armor and the tortoise shield. And I swear to God, I just got that off of, as a drop two seconds ago off of the basilisk. Looked up and realized I wasn't recording. <laughs> so there you go. All right, cool. And look, shadows leveled a tiny bit. Let's head on into the town. Now, I don't even remember... Or I just straight up don't know. It's not even a question of remembering. Everything's shuffled around weirdly in the world of ruin. I don't know what town this is. Oh, it's Zozo. Oh, Christ. So there's going to be a load of combat here, probably. Oh, my God. It seems you'll have some magicites. Want to learn more about Espers? Okay. To use an Esper, you must first equip it by selecting Espers from the abilities menu. To summon the Esper in battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You have been saying the same thing since before. It seems all the tutorial NPCs. Oh shit, it's a hill gigas. Isn't this what we were stealing, like some badass item for? It's like the guys in the uh, the the school back up in um, in Nash. They didn't change after the World of Ruin. What do you guys reckon he's weak to? I'm gonna guess Thunder because he's tall. And we'll do a regular attack with Shadow for now. And we will def. def uh, debilitator. Oh, it's dead already. Okay. So I think those giants were already just mobs here at Zozo. Hello. Zozo? Never heard of it. So what? Is Zozo just completely unchanged? Sorry, I'll get my cursor off screen for you guys. This guy's knocked out. Oh, God. I don't, I don't know whether we're going to find any characters or anything interesting here. Uh, let's attack. Uh, actually, I'm just going to press Q here. Oh, God. Magnitude A. Oh, don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Oh, he just died. Oh, did we get instant death? Hold on, is Shadow... Oh, because he's got the Ichigiki. Nice! I think Shadow just auto-killed him with the Ichigiki. That might have screwed us out of some items, but hey, whatever. Great people here. You can trust everything they say. Yeah, no, they're all liars here, aren't they? Oh, shit. The thing is, guys, Zozo was huge. There was so much going on. What did he say? You won't find a safer town anywhere. It's a lie. You will find safer towns. What else are they going to lie about? And he didn't sell many relics either. Thanks for that, sir. Maybe someone upstairs will. Uh, I don't know whether we should do this. Okay, is that where we make Terra Terra? Oh, I can't cancel it now. I bet that's a single cast. Blizzarga. To be on it, or Thundarga, I should say. To be honest, she could probably just thunder AoE at this point and just blow them all up anyway. Like, Mog one-shotting them, yeah. You know, we're, we're a lot safer here, actually. Mog learned Libra, nice, yeah. What are we actually learning at the moment? Oh, do you know what? We could equip an Esper onto Shadow. Let's equip... I mean, we could do Kate Sith. The reason I want to do Kate Sith is what I explained before. Kate Sith will teach us Imp at a five times acquisition rate, so pretty good. And it's cat rain. The ability is cat rain. Uh, did we ever cast cat rain? I don't remember doing that. Confuses all enemies. I kind of want to see that. Oh, here's the screen, by the way. I mentioned a few episodes ago there was that bug. Or it seemed to be a bug. Here we go. Let's do cat rain. So hold on. Debilitator. Fearer. That's not too scary. Magic. Kate Sith. Confuse all enemies. Here we go. It's a shame you don't see the name of the attack in the menu in-game. Now weak against lightning. Good. Oh, it missed. What does that just mean, though, that she's invulner invulnerable? So if he's weak against lightning, I'll go Thundaga. And that, or she's weak against uh, lightning. There you go. Sorry, Mog. The fight's over. Apparently there's a bunch of bugs and glitches about jump as well. Uh, when you're in the air. Yeah, okay. Hello, sir. I'd like to buy a relic. Why am I at the back of the queue? This is not how we queue. Believe me. No cutting in line. I'm not in line. I'm not cutting in line. What? Oh, there's another guy there. Come on, hurry up. 
Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dudes. Yeah, hi, and now me. Ah, oh, I don't know. I don't know whether he has. Fine, keep your secrets, the harvester. Oh my god, I get so many nervous reactions to seeing all these enemies. We really, really struggled at Zozo before. Look at that. Another quick kill there from Shadow. It's pretty nice, actually. Go with the auto haste and then some kind of big death effect. Giving him the Genji Gauntlet to dual wield Ichigekis would be pretty cool. I, I feel like that would make him happy. Am I going to climb this whole building? Doesn't that take me down if I can... How the hell do I interact with it? Right down the crane. Oh god, I don't know. I guess we'll just keep going and we'll see what we've got. Damn, the chance for the instant death to, to proc seems really high. Okay, now we can't go in there, but we can go there and then jump across... But what if we had kept going up? Or was going across the secret route? Ugh. Hello, another heal, Gigas. And we got ambushed. But he just missed. Okay, <laughs> good job. Oh, if that had been instant death, that would have been awesome. Right, I don't want her to drain too much of her MP. Mm, then there's this door. With a chest, which we had opened. In fact, you know what? If I hit Q, let's see here. Switch maps. Zozo, we found six of the seven chests. We were missing two of the items here. Okay, and now that door's blocked. Okay, so the way is to calm down and along. Here you go. Just trying to regular fire. Multicast. Yeah, look. They've only got like 500 health. So far, Zozo does not seem remotely updated from the World of Ruin. Because the place was already ruined, I guess. Uh, no, but see now. Oh, yeah, okay. We can go out onto the balcony. Up. And now we're behind the guy in the store. Nice, quick instant kill. For some reason, Noise Blaster triggered there. My watch's second hand is pointing at the floor. Yeah, see, I remember this. This was just to do with a clock puzzle, which we've already solved. So an interesting thing's going on with the video here, where essentially I'm just going to be cutting these battles out so you guys don't have to watch them. I could just hit F3 and turn off random encounters now. It's a funny thought. Obtained an ether. Well, there you go. That was one of the items. We can come down here. But I suppose this way at least I'm still getting AP and a little bit of XP, but the AP is the main thing. What I'd quite like to do is just fully learn all the Esper's attacks and everything now. Um... Yeah, they're associated magic, sorry. So that when I decide who I slot, it can be purely motivated by... Oh, there you go. Terra just learned Quake. It can be purely motivated by their stats on level up. The seconds, they're divisible by 20. So they're not divisible by 20. We can keep climbing. We've managed to get a little bit more. It is cool how this is essentially... This is a dungeon, really, but with a very, very interesting and fun theme. <laughs> Very anticlimactic fight there. I was watching that Veil Dancer just waiting for some kind of horrendous fire magic to come at me, but nope. Oh, there you go. Shadow Land Imp. Nice. That was very quick. Are oh, we going to try and use Kate Sith again? Just because it failed once, it doesn't mean I shouldn't try it again other times, right? I'm sure we'll have another encounter or two as we climb up to the top of the tower. Again, we have another branch. We have this door, or we can keep rising. Uh, the door was just for a chest, so that's fine. Oh, God. Actually, we haven't somehow fallen down, have we? Oh, this one's fun. Surrounded by a harvester and a heal gigas. That gigas hits us in the back. It's really going to hurt. Oh, look, and he went for it. He went for Edgar. Now, I know that was only 200, but let's be, to be fair, that's a lot of damage compared to what they're mostly doing. So there's Kate Sith again. Cat rain? Oh, I actually wanted it to be raining cats. Oh, this would be so cool if the gigas hits the... Ah, oh, that's a shame. He hit himself. And for almost no damage. Um... Terra, do you know what? I think you can AoE cure. So there, by the way, you see, I just managed to AoE even though we're surrounded. I was talking about that in a previous episode. And you guys pointed out, you know, you can you can hit X on the keyboard. Actually, I don't. I think one of you guys said you can hit R1 or something because you play with the controller. But uh, yeah, it's X on the keyboard by default for anybody playing on Steam. And it lets you continue to AoE and stuff even when you're surrounded, which is good. Because at first I didn't know that that was possible. And another branch. Okay, no, because that's not a loading screen. And then we get this. I suppose we might be able to jump to the building on the left. Oh, this is funny. We basically did all of this already. <laughs> there was no reward for me, really. Come on, but it's the world of ruin. Give me a little something. 
Final Fantasy, you usually put like some materia or something there, you know? Some special item. Hold on, how am I supposed to get down now? Oh, do we have anyone who knows the spell teleport? Certainly not there. Yes, you do, Terra, thank God. All right, get me out of here, let's go. If you just put me to the entrance of this now. I mean, so Zozo itself counts as a dungeon, that's really weird. I don't know if there's anything going on here. All of that seemed exactly the same. Hmm. The last thing I guess I'll try is, hold on. This room, the pub. Yeah, you just talked about God, it's all, it's all encounters here. I might genuinely use F3 here, just so that we can explore a little bit, right? Like, we're getting very little out of this. The problem is it feels somewhat inauthentic. There you go, Thundara. I think that was like a party wipe before, but no longer. Also, look at that there. He does not normally do much damage. So there you go, encounters off. Let's see, right? That's an interesting signpost. It suggests maybe you can hire a chocobo or something here, but as we all know, you can't. So there's this way out. And that's just nothing. That's just a nice happy view for you. And then we have this area with two doors. That one is rusted shut. That's not something I can interact with, right? And then these were the, t the two chests. So that's basically all the north of the town, right? There's nothing else really going on here. I know it looks like there's a lot going on on the mini map up here because of all the, you know, all the yellow arrows but it's only that you dip in and out over and over and over again of the same building so that's just like the one building oh we do have something here hello what's this hello i can't interact this place is dangerous be careful and don't go doing anything stupid like trying to jump between the buildings well we already did that hold on were these guys here before i don't think they were at least i don't remember them being there maybe they were here was the clock puzzle but we did this already. This is how we got Chainsaw for Edgar. So hold on, what was the time? It was six, 10, and then 50, right? Okay, so the door opens again. Yeah, and we can go through. Yeah, and the chest is already open. Obviously, we can see it there. So it's not anything about the clock puzzle. It's not anything about this guy on the floor. Oh God, what do I do though, guys? I, I, it's looking like there's no point to come back to Zozo. Zozo's actually huge, to be fair. This place is ridiculous. So do I just leave this in this episode? <laughs> just, uh, for no reason at all? A weapon shop. Yeah. And then that clock was pointing at a two. We had all of these clues and things everywhere. So far, the only thing we got was collecting one item. <laughs> Oh, there you go. There's another one. We got a potion. That is incredibly underwhelming. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, look. So we got seven of the seven chests now. There's still one item somewhere. Probably like a potion or something. And then up the north, there's nothing. So that's weapon shop, armor shop, all the dungeons, skyscrapers. Yeah, I think that's it, guys. I don't know. I'll have to have a look between the next two episodes if there's anything going on at Zozo. That is a proper anti-climax. I honest to God thought we were about to get Realm or something. I still don't, genuinely, I don't know how you get Realm. Let's turn the encounters back on. But I guess we've seen Zozo now. Between episodes, I'll look that up and I'll see if there's something we can do there. Uh, but to round out this episode, there is something else. Like I say, I wanted to get an old character back. We've done that. We've got Shadow. Uh, I guess we've done a bunch of talk about the Impalmer and stuff. Now I want to get another totally new character. And to do that, we're going to go to this Triangle Island. I'm really nervous about this. So we were here before. So this place does have some unique encounter stuff. I'm definitely going to quick save here. Here we go. Now, one of the first things I did, if you look, when I came here to the, realm, uh, the World of Ruin was I came here and I got in a fight. I think I actually got in two fights in a row. And both times here, look, it was this fucking thing. The Zone Eater. And I crapped myself because look, he did a thousand damage with gravity there. Obviously that's just halving our current max HP, right? As gravity would. In fact, that's still what he's doing. Does, do we have to attack? But then he did this other thing, right? He was eating us. 
Freezing dust. Frozen. He was using an ability called Sw yeah, Inhale. This was it. And he just did Inhale, Inhale. Munch, munch, gobble, gobble, remember? He inhales. So I don't want to kill it. I don't know what happened. Can you kill it? All right, so there we go. Inhale again. So that's good. Bye-bye, Terra. Uh, Mog. <laughs> um, how do we cure Freeze? We don't really have an item for that, do we? Cures the status ailment of Pet, Imp, Silence, Dark, Sap, and Poison. Not Frozen. Frozen is weird. It's not commonly in Final Fantasy games. It's more of like a, a Pokemon thing. I don't know. Let's skip the turn, I guess. There's gravity. Okay, let's just keep spamming skip. I think what we need him to do is eat all of us. Okay, he gravity's shadow as well. Will shadow ever break out of Frozen? It's an interesting effect, isn't it? like a solid blue block on him another gravity this is funny because when we first met him i believe the previous two encounters we had he was uh, eating us real fast this of course does make me think you know i guess a lot of people look at this and they'll think of june nice he inhaled shadow i wasn't sure if he'd eat the uh the frozen guy so that's good um makes me think of june i guess but to me this is definitely more again of like a final fantasy 10 thing so they go munch munch gobble gobble so he's eating us all i thought this would be game over so i fled and you guys in the comments, you were happy to let that fly. Nobody was like, oh, WP. I think one guy was like, maybe go back there. But look at that. I oh, know. I think actually someone in the live chat at the time was very, he was like, something will happen. But I missed it. Look at that. We end up. So this mysterious place on the world map, it's inside the belly. And what is this music? Holy crap. Nine, uh, nine chests. So this is a whole dungeon, is it? Holy shit, the zone eaters belly. So, uh, what on earth? Okay, what's our health? Okay. Terra is kind of low on MP, so let's have her cure everyone. Terra is just suddenly this crazy carry, and then let's... In fact, this is probably a save point, right? This is either an exit or a save point. Leave. No, I don't want to leave. What does that look like if we just leave? So I guess we've got to do a dungeon here. Okay, I, if it was a save point, I would have restored our MP. But since it's not, I guess I will. Oof. Oh, there you go. We have a high ether. There you go. That's a bit of MP for her. I have no... What kind of enemies are we going to find in here? Nine chests suggests it's quite long. Zoni is belly V2. Oh, my God. Look, there's a guy there. Oh, is, is that the guy? So, yeah, there's a character in here. What the hell are these things? Power Rangers? Wind slash? Oh no, we can use wind slash. Okay, that's got a lot of damage. Okay, let's attack. Let's jump. He's confused before he instantly one shots us all. Let's just multicast Faraga there because that she looks kind of icy. Lightning scroll. Oh my god, we're dying pretty quick here. Oh god, you know, I thought we would just have this. Oh my god, flame scroll. Oh my god, we're so we're so dying. Booty shake. Okay, so the confuser. No, please stop it. Oh, he doesn't double attack. Okay, that's it. You gotta you gotta finish this off now. Oh shit. <laughs> Instantly defeated. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. We will have quick saved when we entered. The game is incredibly forgiving with the quick saves. Wow, you know what? I think almost every single episode in the World of Ruin, we've had a random game over. Here I was at the start of this episode, worried that I'd over-leveled. Okay, so Confuse was a big issue there. We could equip anti-confusion stuff. Here, the Peace Ring prevents Berserk and Confusion. So let's do that on him, and then let's do a Peace Ring on Edgar as well. Like that, I suppose. So that's two of them. Probably terror, actually. No, but I want her to have the jewel earrings. We gotta keep that offense. And I'm gonna use the guz wherever I can. Oh god, here we go. All right, shambling corpses. Jesus. Uh. We could try and Kate Sith. I mean, that was really just for funsies. Oh god, we've just. Oh, we've been imped here. This is just the complete reverse of what we just had. Let's green cherry. Oh wow, we're getting imped real fast. How, why is it zombies are imping us? Is the idea that to be a, to be a zombie is to be an imp? All right, fire is good for melting zombies. 
I don't like the way they're so thin on the bottom, you know. It's like they're floating corpses. Okay, good. Right. Okay, things do die. We just gotta hit them quick. You know, I was recommended by you guys as well to make sure that I equip. Uh, not the Genji glove. Do we take haste off of Mog? I suppose so. But we had an item. Where is it? The alarm earring here. An earring capable of detecting enemy ambushes. This prevents back attacks and attacks from the sides. So what I was talking about with the dinosaurs at the start of this episode. So we shouldn't get ambushed anymore. So are you the new character? Hello? Oh. Hi. Oh. Well, what happened? I was trying to speak to him. <laughs> okay, we're in B3 now. Okay, we're seeing a lot of the chests. Maybe this dungeon isn't as long as I thought it was. The red jacket. What's that? Is that gear for this guy? This is weird. Uh Oh, did we already have a red jacket? Or maybe it's a relic? It might be a relic. Let's see. Yeah, red ja jacket. Prized armor that negates fire damage. Okay, it's just armor that I think we can't wear right now. Oh, somebody finished their Esper as well. Okay, Mog, you finished Kirin. I mean, have we got our value out of Kirin? Did we cast it enough already? I mean, let's just swap to Madowin. Madowin was such a cool story in PC as well. We should put Madowin on Terra. There should be, a, like, a synergy for that. I keep forgetting, by the way, but apparently there is a synergy. When you have Edgar and Sabin together, they get, like, a buff, don't they? Or at least that's what I read at some point and put in my notes here. But I'm looking on the internet again now, and I can't see that verified anywhere. <laughs> So, I don't know. You guys can maybe fill me in in the comments. Okay, that's pretty simple. So, what? You just knocked me off last time. Oh, my God. There's two of them. Oh, is the idea that they these are just bad guys that push us off? Okay, yes. They're just bad guys that push us off. We can't fight them. We can't back attack them or anything. So, it's just like a mini game to avoid them. I thought that was the character <laughs> for a second. I really did. I don't even know the character's name right now. Seriously. Okay, so, okay, I get I get it. I get what the game is. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought he was leaving. I really did. What were the odds that he would stay and he would turn around there again? What were the odds? All right. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Whoops. We keep doing that as well. Temptation to cut all that out very high. All right, all right, he's all the way over there. Okay, we can get fights. Oh my god, wart puck. Okay, let's just get going here quick. Fuma shuriken. Jump. I could start dancing again, by the way. We could trance as well, but I don't think it's necessary. Fire Raga. And let's just pay attention to the damage. If one of them takes less, we know there's some kind of like resistance going on. All right, well, they both died. But that guy didn't seem to get hit too hard. He only took like 2k. Holy water. Oh, I want lock. Realistically, we should be stealing from all of these guys. Okay, I see the game. We could go across the top and get out real easy. But if you want the chests, you have to do all of this. Oh, Genji armor. Armor forged in a foreign land by a master blacksmith. Oh, I wonder if that has a secret perk or something extra. Oh, I'm going to have to make a note of this. On the next episode, we'll figure out what the Genji armor can do as well. Okay. Can you move, please, sir? No, 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 no. Okay, it's fine. Just button mash enough and we're okay. I want to see. When he, when he comes to this square, we know we're safe. Okay, see? Just got to be patient. We get another brush for Realm, who is Christ knows where. Certainly not here. Who are these guys? This is so weird. Oh, this one's scary because he might run all the way over to us while we're waiting for this guy to move. Oh, don't do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay, yeah, go back over there. Come on, dude. Move. No. <laughs> oh, this is horrifying. Yeah, good. Go all the way over there. Hello? Yeah, over. Do you think this is pure random? They really don't want me to have that chest, which makes me want that chest more than anything else. Come on, one over. Okay, I'm going for it. No! Oh, oh. Okay, so you just can't be adjacent. Oh, damn it. Okay, okay, hold on here as well. I'm going to quick save because I'm terrified. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Are you doomed or something? 
Are you zombied? I think he was zombied, so we just holy water him. It's a good thing I caught that. Oh man, these potion sound effects. There are certain things in this that get me so nostalgic. Every time I've slept in that old man's bed and it's played the like sleeping Final Fantasy jingle. Oh, editing me is going to hate myself for this, but look, find it online and play it. It's such a good jingle. Online? No, I'll do you one better and just go in game and record sleeping at the old man's house again, because why not? <laughs> Um, oh god, now what? Now what? Ugh. We're just gonna have to wait for him to go. Uh, I love that sound so much, and I've just been hearing it over and over and over again. Alright, so we need him to move one over again now. Alright, there we go. And I'm gonna take the risk. If, if, if in the event he'd gone left there and this guy was still closing in, I would have just stayed anyway. Because the time it takes faffing around would have been annoying. Obtained fake mustache. A fake mustache once worn by a circus ringmaster changes the sketch command to control. Hold on, Realm has sketch, right? So we're going to give Realm a fake mustache? Is it Realm that sketch? I'm sure she had sketch, didn't she? Does this new guy also have sketch? Okay, this mustache thing looks insane. Uh, I can't wait to talk about it in the next episode. I know the gist of what this new guy does. Okay, the, the, no time like the present. Come on, move, 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 move. Nice. Oh, so good. Okay, please don't kill me. Uh, it's these things. This was the wave that killed us before. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Confuse all enemies with a noise blaster. That will buy us a little bit of time before they confuse us. And then you can... Did it work? No, it missed. So try and confuse them again. Okay, now Faraga, the lot of them. Okay, Edgar's low. Oh, we're going to have to get that goddamn eye if we wipe here now. Okay, hold on. So we're in a cave, right? So let's use the Earth Blues. We've still never used the Snowman Rondo, but I think since we're in a cave, it's the Earth Blues. Oh god, the Lightning Scroll, that's that's really not good. Maybe there's something else we can throw. I mean, screw it, just get another Shuriken and hope that Terra survives this next Lightning Scroll. Okay, alright, 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 alright. Faraga, 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 they're dying ever so slightly. Come on, Terra, cast! Okay, I think we're good. I think, I think they're dead. And Mog can jump and survive regardless now. Oh, okay. Ooh. Thank you, Edgar. You took one for the team. But we survived, thanks to you. Uh, I want to heal, but I don't want to use Terra to heal. So here, Mog, thankfully, has learned a few. Mog's got some tricks up his sleeve now. There you go. Thank you, Mog. That's why you're on the case. That's why you're the face of the game. Okay, so now what? Uh, we have five of the nine chests. We have a save point and a heal point. Should we tent? Give us our MP back. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see a different tent. Let's see... Mog's tent. We didn't see Mog's tent yet, did we? Oh, here we go. Oh, how about we don't scroll from the bottom to the top? Uh, it's very pink. <laughs> I like it. It's just such a basic recolor. Why is that so entertaining to me? <laughs> And I'll go with another quick save. Man, the fact I can only have 20 saves. The other game that I've just let's played, I genuinely made like 200 saves. And it was kind of horrifying. Oh my god, that's also horrifying. Wait, did we get hit? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to have to remember. Oh, we can cheat because we're on PC. Here, look. Ready? Ooh. All right, we're safe here. I don't know whether that really helps though, does it? If we're trying to get to the chest. So all of that is safe over there. And we can sprint. You know, I think one of the weirdest accessories in this game is that thing that means you always sprint. Oh, I can't... Huh. I can't open my inventory to see what that item did. I guess something about this menu? They don't want me pausing or whatever? 
It's funny, in the classic Tomb Raiders, if you watch speedruns of it, they've got all of these weird glitches where if you open a menu at the right time or if you save and reload at the right time, it resets the level geometry. So, for example, you can be jumping towards, like, a trap with timed spikes and the spikes are going to come up and kill you. But then just before you get there, you can save and reload and now the spikes won't do it because the time is reset and you'll be fine. Oh, we get another hero's ring. That's good. I'm going to wait here. Oh my god, do we just die if we get hit on this? Oh, I'm a little nervous here. I think it's this tile here. It might be both. Oh god. There. I, I, I'm going to go with the upper one. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, I think it was both. Okay. In front of the chest? Oh, no. It may, but what if it's above the chest? I think I'm wrong. I didn't actually check. It was above the chest! No! Okay, so what does this mean? Oh, that's just game over! Holy crap! Well, they don't throw any punches there. Okay. Right, well, we got the auto... So, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, do you know what? You could probably just bum rush to that chest right at the start. I'm gonna go for it. I don't see the need to do the, the other thing. Nice. Unless there's like an item finder, tap E. Yeah, oh man, I should have guessed. I knew that they tricked me, but it was too late to turn around. We get a hero's ring. And then it was like this square down here. There. And then we want to go above the chest. And that's pretty far off screen. But yeah, above the chest. We get the pinwheel. Well, hold on. Well, how do I know where to go now? Well, actually... Wait. Oh, that's still not... Oh! It's not above the chest. It's literally... It's death all around it. So, here's what I think we do. First of all, I'm going to go for it quick here. Ready? Nice. I think... Oh, do you think we've got time to do the whole thing? Nah, opening the chest is too difficult. I'm going to run down... Well, we'll go to this, this final safe spot. Uh, we probably would have had time for that safe spot, actually. Right. From here, I'm going to come all the way down south, down here. It's nice to have a cursor for this. It's like i got a pointer, you know. And then... Right. And then we run up, get, grab the chest, and come down. Ready? And that's why this is, like, extra for us. Looks like Mog gets knocked over no matter what. Okay, cool. So there you go. And we get the pinwheel. Excellent. Right. What were all these items here? Pinwheel. Oh, it's a weapon! Foreshadow, a pinwheel with sharp cutting blades. Use with... Oh, wait, no. Oh, hold on. That we throw? A paintbrush, the fake mustache. What else was it? The other stuff, I guess, stacked with the other things. Well, I, if I only have a single pinwheel, I'm not going to want to throw that, am I? If I only have one. Oh, well, was there a thing where it wasn't actually using the currency? No, it is using the currency. Yeah, 26 remaining, and we bought like 40 of them. Yeah, looking on Wiki, the pinwheel is the strongest throwing weapon in this game. That's like his final throwing weapon, if you will. Uh, but you can only get it in a couple of chests around the game. So you're going to have incredibly low ammo. Aside from the chest, the other thing you can do is a lot of Colosseum betting. So, I don't know, uh, if you really want to go to all that effort. But to be honest, I'm thinking of putting Shadow onto another build. We'll, we'll see what we've got. Oh god, what have we got now? What's our chest count? Eight out of nine. So what are these then? Oh, they're already open chests. Wait, where are we? Oh my god. Well, I never opened those. Oh, they're not chests at all. Oh god, they're springboards. Oh, it's like we're doing a cloister of trials, guys. So the question is, if we go up here, do we bounce bounce? Or does the orientation mean that this will throw us in a pit? Let's see. No? Okay. We bounce bounce. Okay, so if I want that chest, we just... Oh, this, this screen's really simple. Oh, no, it's not. Huh. Hmm. Okay, so if I come down here, can I jump down? I can. So that's going to change them. It's not going to change them. Oh, I see. So if I go here, that would take me out straight away. Instead, if I want the chest, I'm going to go this way. And come all the way along. All the way along. There we go. And we get the thunder shield. Nice. So much gear. <laughs> I love the fact that this is all inside some kind of monster that ate us. All of it. Okay, and then we come all the way around here. Alright, that's a fun, satisfying little room. Oh my god. Oh, please no boss. 
Okay, yeah, here, this guy. A man shrouded in strange clothing. Or perhaps it's a woman. Or perhaps it's not human at all. Gogo, that's his name, her name, their name. That's it, Gogo. The last character of the game. And I don't even know where to begin with this. I think this guy is like a mime, right? So, is it Sketch they get? No, I'm sure Realm only gets. But he gets something a bit like Sketch. Basically, he copies what your allies do or something. I am Gogo. Master, I thought they were going to be mute, but I guess not. You, you would expect it, right? As a mime, and then that's an excuse not to write any dialogue. I am Gogo, master of Ninakri. It has been a long, long time since anyone visited me here. I have been idle for too many years. Perhaps I ought to mimic you. Tell me, what are you doing here? Oh, do we not have any appropriate characters for the dialogue? I see. So, you seek to save the world. You know, we really should keep Celeste with us at all times, because she might be the only one who they've got a bit of dialogue for. Actually, no. So, I found a, an amazing Reddit thread that lists all the unique dialogue interactions, and there is zero dialogue for this guy. Zero. So, we're not actually missing anything. It doesn't matter who you bring down here. I see. So, you seek to save the world. Then I guess that means I shall save the world as well. Lead on. I will copy your every move. Wow. Um, that's one of the most contrived, ridiculous reasons you ever get a party member in a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> Lead on, I'll copy your every move. Now, I don't, I've got a friend who's replaying regular... Um, so, one of the remakes for Seven just came out. Like, the sequel to the remake. I can't remember. It's not It's not FF7 Remake. It's se FF7... Hold on, was that it? It's FF7 Rebirth or Reborn or something. I can't remember. Anyway, so, uh, that inspired a friend of mine to go back and play regular Seven. Um, and he was talking to me about it, and I can't remember, but Kate Sith in that game. I know the full story of Kate Sith. I know the real reason that Kate Sith follows your party. I'll keep this sort of spoiler free, I guess. But I believe the initial reason as to why Kate Sith there is also incredibly flimsy. Um, but yeah, okay, so now we just got to get out alive, right? Oh, and we are threatening to be crushed here. I'm going to go, go, ready? Go, 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 go. Nice. Oh, we could have made it the whole way. Jeez. Do you guys think this is meant to be like its digestive system or something, you know? But it doesn't even, they didn't even try to make it gory or anything. It's just what it is. All right, Gogo didn't even mention going to the airship. I don't I, they didn't even think about that. Gogo, it wasn't even on Gogo's mind about getting out of this monster. In fact, Shouldn't all of these people be excited about the idea that we're going to get out? I mean, they're not saying anything. Uh, Edgar. Okay. Oh, my God. As an imp, we got the instant death. But he's undead, so he's still alive. That is so cool. Okay. Uh, whatever. Terra, can you just kill these fools before they imp us all, please? Let's go with some attacks here. Oh, hopefully he doesn't fully re refresh their health. Didn't we have a moment like that before? Well, there you go, baby. Doesn't matter, because they don't have enough max health anyway. We're going to need to deal with this imping, though. Believe it or not, you see this imp thing? Another cool little bit of trivia I learned about this game, guys. Apparently, they actually are talking about, like, unused content in the game. This might be quite interesting to you. They have sprites for imps on the overworld. You know how they, they appear in this art? An actual imp wandering around in the overworld, they have it, but it's not used. And in fact, not just the one... But they have it for, like, imps on mounts and on, chocob on chocobos and in the Magitek armor and everything. There's a whole suite of things. We don't even need, need to dodge these guys now, do we? I guess I just did anyway, because, hey, why not? Oh, we're going to fight. Oh, it's another scary one with another wart pug. I wonder if there's something really rare in here, like the Tombreeze were rare. Uh, let's, let's dance the Earth Blues. And let's noise blast. Oh shit, Terra's zombied. We gotta deal with that. Will that cure her? It might. Let's see. We get a heal. Do we get a Condi cleanse? Oh god, no. It, it, that actually killed Shadow. Alright, if they're confused, at least for a moment, that'd be really nice. Oh, Jesus. Wait, why is, why is Shadow alive on zero health? Because he's also zombied, I guess, right? Oh shit, that White Wind's gonna finish him off. Okay, Holy Water. Terra. Oh my god, he snorted his friend? 
that's sort of the opposite of what got us in here, right? Oh, no, 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 Mog, you're killing us all. I'm going to flee. I'm going to flee. Okay. I, unless Terra gets a turn. In. No, no, no. Oh, God. All right, there you go. Shadow got out on zero health as a zombie. We will survive as zombie Shadow regardless. All right, Terra, do you want to show this fool how it's done since he doesn't seem to be threatening you anymore and he's the only target, so you're going to get a bump on your magic? Look at that. Look at those cowardly men just running away. That's how it's done. Oh, yeah. Right. Is shoe buff? I have a little macro. Uh, did I mention this already? I have a chat macro in FF14 now, which is uh, uh, basically a bunch of Hypello quotes. Like, my hello is, like, spoken in Hypello, and I don't actually have the uh, ride the shoe... Um, the shoe puff thing, but I do have shroof sailing for like whenever we clear like a trial or a raid or something. Leave, yes please, let's go, let's get out of here. It, oh god, I don't have to fight a boss to leave, do I? But how does that work? Oh, we just we just pop out here. So the mystery of this location is solved now. I do want to add as well another little bit of trivia about this Triangle Island. If you remember, we visited this Triangle Island in the world of balance as well. Back then, it was arguably even more deadly. Here, we just get the Zone Eater over and over and over again. Back then, though, there was that crazy monster, the Intangir, remember? It was, like, really deadly, had more health than Ultima Weapon. It started invisible uh, and, you know, just generally dominated us. Now, that thing has got a ridiculously huge wiki page. It's, like, where you can learn a really cool technique for Strago and stuff. You could steal, like, the Magisite, which would give you random Esper summons. Just a crazy mob. Um... And now it's gone in the world of Ruin because the Zone Eater here is instead. So it's just a really fun, interesting place. As far as the Intangi is concerned, because I did encounter it and ran away at least once, that has unlocked it as a potential find in the Velt, which is kind of a nightmare if you want to grind it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But technically, I can find it and I could kill it if I was trying to go for 100% bestiary. Um, there's so many glitches. Like, there's a weird thing you can do to, like, make... They call it the Psycho Cyan glitch and stuff. There's loads of weird things on different editions of the game about killing that Intanjo. And I actually remember you guys in the comments had a bunch of information about how you managed to kill it too. But that's the thing. If you're going to fight it, most people fight it only in the early game, in the world of balance. Because when you get to the world of ruin, it's gone and replaced with the zone eater. That's, that's what that area is. And that's Gogo on our team. I mean, what the hell? I'm interested to go speak to him in the Falcon. And uh, I will try to build a comp around him or something. Next time, guys. Oh, my God. We got a list of things, actually, here that I've got. I want to verify. I'll have a bunch of cool new trivia and interesting things. We'll have these last three places. Strago, Realm, Lock, Cyan. Where are they? Let's see if we can get them. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you're enjoying, and I'll see you for the next episode of Final Fantasy VI very soon. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you shortly. So I've given it about a week since the previous episode to give everyone a chance to like rewatch, catch up if they like. Uh, the videos will be coming fairly quick from now on, and uh, keep your eye out for another series as well. You'll see more on that very soon.